Okay, this is going to be a short little video on writing the formulas for compounds, and we will discuss this in greater depth, Unit 5. Dalton stated that compounds are made from two or more different elements in the lowest whole number ratio. For example, every one of these are compounds. This guy is called carbon dioxide. This is dihydrogen monoxide. And write these down, please. This is sodium, and we are getting into naming, phosphate. And notice that the negative end, the phosphate end, is one of your polyatomics, as is the sulfate and this is called sulfuric acid. Which you will be introduced to shortly. All compounds are electrostatically neutral and what that means is if you look at my examples you will notice that there is no charge in the upper right hand corner. So all compounds are electrostatically neutral. There is no charge on a compound. There are two types of compound. Ionic, which is a cation and an anion attracted electrostatically. You could have monatomics from the periodic table or polyatomics from your list that could make up the ionic compound. And they can be either monatomic cation or anion, or a polyatomic cation or anion. And if you recall, I told you there was only one polyatomic cation on the list, and that was ammonium. So the ionic compounds are made from a cation, which is positively charged, and an anion, which is negatively charged, that get attracted to each other, opposites attract, so you get a compound. Molecular compounds are from sharing, and we will get into molecular also. All right, on the periodic table, a couple of things I want you to remember. Monatomic mm -hmm. cation or anions come off the periodic table. With the exception of transition metal, the family or group number will tell you how many electrons a monatomic cation or anion will lose or gain. And again, most of the metals, well, all the metals will lose, and the nonmetals will gain electrons. So in the family number, family number one, you will have a one plus charge because they will lose one electron. Family number two is a two plus charge because they will lose two electrons. All these transition metals, including the lanthanides and actinides, vary. And that includes lead, bismuth, and tin. They are also trans considered transition metals because they have a different number of valence electrons to lose, so they have different charges. On this side, this family number 13 used to be called 3A. It will be a 3 plus charge, particularly aluminum and particularly gallium. Next to family number 3A, or 13, you have 14, or 4A, and this is going to be a 4 plus when you're talking the metals, um, and might be even different. So for just simplicity, it's 4 plus. Sometimes the carbon can be 4 minus. This is kind of the halfway mark, because again, octet rule means 8. 
uh, you can lose, for example, family number two will lose two, and under those two is another layer of eight electrons. So it's easier to lose two than to gain six. With the nonmetals, you start gaining. Since this is family number five, and it can only accommodate eight, this is going to be a three minus, two minus, and a one minus, with these guys not doing anything, because again, those are the noble gases, which are inert. So they'll form molecular compounds because they're okay to share, but they do not lose or gain. So these are inert. That's why they're that way. All right, let's see. Ionic compounds. In ionic compounds, the cations are always listed first, whether you write the formula or the name. So that's name or formula. cation is first, and the anion is second. Monatomic cations and anions come from the periodic table. So for example, I have a compound that's going to be made of magnesium and chloride. Uh, magnesium and chlorine. First, the neutral atoms of the element magnesium and the element chlorine have to lose electrons in the case of magnesium and gain in the case of chlorine because magnesium is a metal metal heads are losers to become positively charged so magnesium is going to lose electrons and it is in family number two so it is going to lose two electrons and two electrons to become positively charged and it takes energy to rip out two electrons from the neutral atom. Chlorine, on the other hand, is a nonmetal. It is on the right hand side of the periodic table and it also takes energy to put an electron into chlorine and chlorine is only going to gain one electron because of course it is in family number seven it has seven valence electrons. It can only accommodate eight, so it gains one to make eight. A lot easier for chlorine to gain an electron to make eight than to lose seven to the lower level of eight. These two guys, since one is positively charged and one is negatively charged, are going to be attracted to each other electrostatically and form a compound. Compounds are not charged. So you have to do a little bit of math. Look at it logically. In order for this number here and this one to add up to be zero, you need two of these. So the formula tells you lowest whole number ratio. So in order to have a magnesium chloride compound, and that's what its name is, which we are going into naming next, and it is called magnesium chloride. In order to have a magnesium chloride compound, you need two chlorides and one magnesium. And just think of the math attached. This is a plus two, and this is two times a negative one, and if you add these two up, you get zero, which compounds are. All right, we're gonna do another example. Uh, let's pick an ionic compound made from aluminum and oxygen. Aluminum is a metal. Metal heads are losers to become positively charged. It is in family 13 or 3A and has three valence electrons that it is going to lose for a charge of plus three. So here's my neutral atom and here is my charged ion, and it is a cation. Oxygen is a nonmetal. Oxygen is going to gain electrons. Oxygen is in family number 6A or 16. It has six valence electrons around it. It can fit only two more, one there and one there. So it is going to be an ion with a two minus charge. 
So again, here is the neutral atom and here is the charged anion. All right, now I want to write the formula of the ionic compound of aluminum oxide, which is what it's called. I need the compound formula to be neutral. I need these two charges to add up to be zero. As is, they will not add up to be zero. So I do a little intuitive thought process and think, what does two and three have in common? Six. That means in order for the compound to be adding up to be zero, I will need two aluminums and I will need three oxygens. This is the formula for aluminum oxide. Now I'm going to check my work underneath here. Each aluminum is a plus three, and I have two of them. Each oxygen is a negative two, and I have three of them. Three times two is a plus six. Three times a negative two is a negative six. I add them up. I get a zero. There's my formula for this particular ionic compound. Let's do a transition metal this time. So I am going to say I want a compound formed from cobalt 2 plus and uh, chlorine again. Ah, pick bromine. All right. Now, cobalt 2 plus, a transition metal, has a variety of oxidation states, a variety of charges. So the 2 tells you which ion we are using. So here's my cation. Bromine is not. Bromine's a nonmetal because ionic compounds are made from metals and nonmetals, cations and anions. Bromine is the anion end. It is in family number 7. So it would have a 1 minus charge. It gains one electron. These guys coming together logically would require one cobalt and two bromines. So I call it cobalt 2 bromide. And again, we are getting into nomenclature naming in the next unit. So this is just a precursor. All right, now do the math, check your work. Cobalt is a plus two, and there's only one of them. Bromine is a negative one, and there's two of them. Does it add up to zero? Yes. Should it? Yes, because compounds are zero. All right, let's do another one, one last one. Oh, let's see. All right, let's do one rubidium and sulfur. Rubidium and sulfur are going to form an ionic compound. How do I know? Because this is from the left-hand side. This is a metal. This will form a cation. This is from the right-hand side. This is a non-metal. This will form an anion. Rubidium is in family number one. Metal heads are losers to become positively charged. So rubidium will lose, and it will lose one electron, because that's all it has in the valence electron category. Sulfur is a nonmetal. Sulfur is in family number six. That means it has six valence electrons. It can only accommodate eight, so if it has six, it can only take on two more. So its anion has a two minus charge. And again, compounds, this is going to be an ionic compound. Cation is listed first all the time. And if you look at it logically, I will need two rubidiums for every one sulfur atom in order for the compound to be neutral, zero charge. I'm going to check my work at the bottom. Rubidium is a plus one. This is just a little algebra I do to check my work. Do these numbers add up to be zero? Yes, they do. Therefore, that 
which is called rubidium sulfide. That, and that is the formula, rubidium sulfide is the name for this ionic compound, which is a two to one ratio, two rubidium atoms for every one sulfur atom.